Praise God. It's always a great privilege for me to deliver the pure, uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ. And allow me to start this message for today as I begin in prayer as it is habitual for me to always start the day and everything by prayer. Father God, we honor your presence. And we thank you so much that you have chosen all of us. And give us a listening ear. And give us a heart that can contain and a mind that can believe the gospel that will be that will be taught. May you receive all the honor as we act on it in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Vision. As I pass through the billboards along the highways and in the advertisement on TV, I often take notice of optical company and one of those they have so many advertisement on TV along the highways on billboards and it offers corrective lenses for the eyes so the eyes is used for seeing and the eyes is only useful if it has a perfect vision and they grade that perfect vision as 2020 i am not an optometrist and i don't know why 2020 on what scale they are using it but i am able to understand because when I bought my eyeglasses for reading, without the help of those eyeglasses, I cannot stand the strain of reading. And that vision become blurred as I go along in on reading the Bible, the books. So vision is very important. And also it beautify by corrective lenses that is not the usual normal optical uh, optical lenses but it is placed on the eyes itself so vision is very important and vision is always connected with what you have read where what you have thought upon what you have meditated and what you have intelligently dissected or analyzed vision for without vision people perish a nation can go no farther vision is very important a vision of today and a vision of the future and the right vision is the vision of jesus christ and as I heard a preacher that taught on impending doom about the fulfillment of a segment of book of prophets that foretold that the color of the, the moon will be bloody red in color and based on on facts based on history when the moon turned blood there will be a great happening in Israel but I will not delve on that 
prophetic color of that moon. What I am after is your personal vision. My personal vision. And we need to have a clear vision, a clear mental picture of what we are going to do and where we are to go. So the vision has to be imparted inside. And as we meditate on that imparted inside vision, I can close my eyes, but I can see what I have heard because it will draw a picture in my mind. And my imagination will be able to see whatever the word or whatever the news story will affect me. So the message is titled, Purity, to clear your vision. Purity. The word purity means that there is no other a thing. When I thought of cold or hot feeling, so I will feel nothing but hot or feel only what is cold. So in, if I remain in a, an air-conditioned room for sometimes at 16 degrees Celsius, then in due time, say one hour, I will be shivering with cold because that concentrated air will affect my feeling and emotion. So vision will greatly affect each one of us. So what do you look at and to whom are you looking? Purity to clear vision. In Psalms 51, because we have important part in our system that need to be pure. First, we have to have a clean mind. No impurities. A clear conscience. No impurities. And a pure heart. No impurities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Heart and spirit. Interchangeably, it is referred in most of the pages of the Bible that heart and spirit, human spirit. So, a clean heart and a right spirit. A clean heart is a heart that is filled with pureness. Clean heart. A, the heart of every person is a container. So if our heart contain the right thing that has to be contained, then we shall experience peace. So what are those things that we have to store in our heart? Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So when our heart is clean, then there will be renewal in our spirit. A clean heart, a renewed right spirit. Not just renewed spirit, but renewed right spirit. And the source of rightness is the Word of God. Therefore, my heart and your heart shall be filled with the Word of God. So that a right spirit will follow a heart that is filled with with truths. In Psalms 119.11, so we are after a clean heart. And how shall it be created? Psalms 119.11, the creation of a clean heart. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. 
Thy word, the word of Holy Scriptures, the word of God, the word of Jesus, the word of life, that eternal life that is in the word of God. Thy word have I hid in mine heart. So what is the container of the word? My heart, your heart will be the container. So when the word of God is, is, is stored in your heart, when the word of God is, is stored in any person's heart, it will take effect. Our mind, our thoughts, our imagination will affect our emotion, will affect our decision. Let us be wise and continue on living excellently by living wisely and the wise living in order to continue on excellently is for all of us to fill our heart with the Word of God. Because when our heart is filled to overflowing with the Word of God, and how shall you fill your heart with the Word of God? By reading the Word, by listening to the preaching of the Word, by memorizing Word of Scriptures. Not only memorizing, but also meditating, and then acquainting ourselves with the Word. What will happen if our heart is clean? What will happen if our heart is filled with the Word of God? So our mouth is connected with our heart. So a clean mind, right spirit, will affect our conscience. And our conscience is our judge on how to decide between good or bad. So what will be the source of our decision? And what will be the sure source of distinctives about what is good and about what is bad. And it is again the Word of God. The Word of God will dictate upon us what is right and what is wrong. What is good and what is evil. What is foolish and what is uh, wise. What is wicked and what is righteous. The Word of God will clearly show us the wonderful truths on how to live right in the sight of God. Purity, so that we have a clear vision. In 1432, if I remember correct, the eclipse, the earth in between, the sun and the moon, in 1432 or 14 whatever, but it was in that year. There was an eclipse that made the moon blood red. It was the time that the Jews of Spain were persecuted. That unless all the people of Spain will be converted to Christianity, they will be expelled, they will be imprisoned, they will be subjected to persecution according to the king of that uh, era and time. It affected the scattered people of Israel. In 1948, once again, the moon, the sun, and the earth, so the earth again in between the sun and the moon, turned red. The moon turned red. That was 1948, and after that, Israel was born as a nation. Then again, in 1967, again, the moon turned red. And there is again a great happening in Israel. There, there was a six-day war, and they won, and they get again the Jerusalem area under their rulership and government. And the prophecy of another bloody moon will be in 2014 and 2015. So it is only just a year from now. 
So we have to do good in 2013 so that we are prepared on what will happen to Israel in 2014, much so in 2015. So we have to have purity. Purity in heart, clear, clean mind, clear conscience, and then pure heart. So pure heart, clean mind, and clear conscience. Pure heart. So our heart is a container and it has to be filled with the Word of God. Because what you speak, you will create. So the way you will speak and the word you will speak, it is either of the two ways. It will bless you or it will curse you. Whatever you speak, creates. Creates your life. Creates your environment. If it is negative, the result will be negative. If it is positive, the result will be positive. So make sure that the source of positive things are the Word of God. The Word of God. So we have to develop a pure heart by memorizing and by meditating, by acquainting ourselves in the Word of God. Let us read the Bible every day. Let us listen to the Word of God, preach thoughts, and shared to us, not only frequently, but consistently and constantly. As we take our food every day, we have a designated time for our meals, then let us designate a time for us to read on the Bible every day. Because without reading the Bible, you are missing a wonderful, life-giving Word which comes from the Word of God. In Matthew or in Acts 24, 16. So, pure heart and then clear conscience. Acts 24, 16. And herein do I exercise myself to have always a Conscience void of offense toward God and toward men. A conscience. Because our sinning starts with our conscience. You can smile in front of me, but at the back of your mind, you are irritated of me. You can give a good showing. You can even prepare good food for a friend, but deep inside, you are hurt by some experience with your friend. So an offended conscience cannot do much and cannot do be better. So we have to mightily decide and follow our decision and be committed to the, uh, that decision to make a clear conscience void of or without offense in the sight of God and in the sight of men. Then thirdly, we need a clean mind. And what is a clean mind? A clean mind is a mind that always think of the good of others. The golden rule is do good to those People, to all people. So bless people as you would others to bless you. Do good as you would others to do good to you. So whatever we do, we receive. So let us be merciful as God is merciful so that we shall obtain mercy. So what is a clean mind? It is thoughts and attitudes. Blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called children of God. So how shall you have a clean mind? A clean mind, a clear conscience, and a pure heart. In Philippians 4, 8. 4, 8. So what I am after is for a mouth that is powerfully Clean. 
Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. So foot and the mind, things that are true, things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are of good report. If there a, be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So if you are thinking of some evil thought against any person, don't continue on that. Remove it at once. Ask for forgiveness. Do not let your mind be bothered by negative thoughts about circumstances, about people. Get rid of those negative thoughts. Do not be affected do not be influenced by evil thoughts. Maintain a clean mind, a clear conscience, and a pure heart. Because our heart is the residence of Jesus, and our mind is the residence of the Holy Spirit. Because of this truth that Jesus is in my heart, my spirit, and the Holy Spirit resides in my mind, which is part of my soul, who glory, then my mouth will be mightily controlled by my heart and spirit and by my mind, inhabited by Jesus and by the Holy Spirit. In Matthew 12.34, this is what will get out of our mouths. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaketh. It is not true that it is only an error when somebody speaks to you nonsense and bad things. Foul-mouthed people is speaking bad because their heart is devoid of good things. Their mind is without good thoughts. So any person that has not good thoughts and good storage of good things in their heart, their mouth will speak bad things. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is speaking. Again, let me go back to my first explanation about on how your heart will be filled, how your heart will be pure, how your mind will be clean, and how your conscience be clear. It's by reading, it's by meditating, it's by appropriating the word, it's by acting on the word. Oh, generation of vipers. What is vipers? What are vipers? So vipers are those poisonous snakes. Oh, generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, so the generation of vipers are the generation of evil people, and they cannot speak good things. Do not expect that you can hear good things from the generation that are evil. For the, out of the abundance of the heart, out of the abundance of the heart, so from the heart proceed what they will be speaking. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth is picket. So, the content of our mind, the content of our heart, it will come out of our mouths. Jesus is always right. And he taught that it is not the things from outside that we put into our bodies that will make us that will make us bad. It is what is in store in our heart, in our mind, as we speak, it will affect our body. So if we speak bad because the content of our heart is bad and the content of our mind is bad. And remember this, death and life is in the power of your tongue. You can bless yourself by the way you speak. You can curse yourself by the way you speak. And the way you will speak is dependent on the content of your heart, of your spirit, and the content of your mind. So make sure that your mind will be filled with the Word of God. Make sure 
and be sure that your heart and your spirit will be overflow with the Word of God. Lack of the Word of God, it will show in your mouth. So be wise. Decide now that starting today, you will now reinvent. You will now transform your heart and your mind so that it shall be filled with the Word of God that you might not sin against God. That we might not sin against God. Let us pray. Father God, thank you for thy Holy Spirit. And thank you that your Word gives comforts, exhortation, and edification. May everyone edified by the clear message of a good vision from a pure and clean and clear heart, mind, and conscience. Bless everyone as they partake and apply it to their personal life. In Jesus Christ's name, and everyone say, Amen. So again, after this wonderful message, I challenge everyone that is not yet born again to surrender your life. This is a historic and significant challenge for your life. So that you can cope up with the many adverse circumstances that surround. So that you can win over against anxiety and worry. Because when a person always worry, it will affect their entire body and being. But when a person is praiseful, thankful to God, his life and body will be experiencing happiness that cannot be explained. So what you need today is to surrender your life and make Jesus your personal Lord by repeating after me. Jesus, I surrender my life to your Lordship and ask you to take over my life entire and complete. And I ask also, let the Holy Spirit Reside, dwell, and live in me. Thank you for my salvation. And thank you for the Holy Spirit that will always guide me. Father, receive this attitude of gratitude toward your goodness in Jesus Christ's name. And say, Amen. And for our Sunday worship schedule from 9.30 in the morning until 11.30 in the morning and 4.30 in the afternoon until 6.30 in the evening on 2nd Floor, Medical Building, Ortigas Avenue, Green Hills and 1. And for more information, you can call us at 632-726-8016 or you can text us at 63915-391-7408. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter.